Wow, what an amazing interview I have for you today. So this is a little free part. Um, I recently did a direct booking masterclass all around PR with the fantastic Megan from Rural Roots. So what I've done is I've, I've taken apart the, the one hour video that we did and I've got three little videos and podcasts to share with you. And today is going to be one of those videos. Um, this was real action taking podcast and I would love everybody to pay special attention to what we're going to be talking about. Um, if you want to find out more, um, head to booster.co.uk forward slash podcast. You can go to the YouTube channel. You can go to Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast, you can go and check out video, audio, blogs, etc. Everything's at boostly.co.uk forward slash podcast. Uh, massive thank you to Megan for doing this. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with another episode as always. But again, for now, please keep attention, pay attention, make notes, but most importantly, take action uh, as we talk about PR, marketing, and how it can help you generate direct bookings and not spend any money doing so. Let's go down the route of that we want to get involved in, in PR. Now, there's, there's, from what I've learned, and, and my knowledge is, is very slim on this, there's two types, there's proactive and there's reactive. Now, yeah. can you please just very quickly cover the two types of of PR that, that, that is out there. And we'll start with proactive and work on reactive. If there's any, if there's any more actives, throw them in, in as well. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, proactive is obviously pre-planned. So pre-planned pre PR activity. So if you have um, an event coming up or a new launch um, or something along those lines, you've planned in that PR activity for, you will know weeks in advance what you need. You will uh, do lots of planning on who to contact. You'll do your research on what journalists to contact or um, you know what social media posts you're going to put out, what blogs you might write, what newsletters, all of these fall under the PR category as well and there's a huge crossover um, so that's proactive reactive is where something happens um, obviously in in the press in the national arena international arena or even just locally um, that you can react to that you can jump on the bandwagon of or what we call in the industry as news jacking um, so you will news jack that story so for example, I mean, basically in the last year, all we've done is reactive because we've not known from day to day what we can do, what we can plan in. There's no point in promoting something in advance, especially events when events haven't been able to take place. So we've been just newsjacking everything and making sure that we can react as and when we need to. So let's talk about the, the newsjacking because I think when it, because we'll, we'll very quickly go back to proactive in, in a little bit, but I think this this news jacking, this reactive PR is is really important. So, mm. they, because this is this is where your business can get in the eyes of so many people um, in such a, sh a quick amount of time. In my yeah. opinion, from from when I've worked alongside this, it can be one of them where it is literally so quick paced because. Um, when it is reactive, a journalist will want to speak to you and it's got to be there and then. And, and then it's literally out that evening potentially because it is mm -hmm. just nowadays. So how can a business owner set themselves up the best to be able to take advantage of reactive or news jacking PR? Like what can they be doing, whether it's on Twitter or relationship building or how they structure their website or their social media profiles? or just anything like that. What, what are some of like the, those quick fire tips that you usually like to give out to somebody when you're doing something like this and explaining to, 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 a, to a host or a business owner? You've, you've just listed most of them, to be honest. I mean, building a relationship with, with the press is really, really vital. Um, and Twitter is absolutely the tool for that. So using hashtags like hashtag journal request on Twitter is a really great way of keeping on top of what journalists are looking for in articles. So if a journalist is writing an article on a particular subject, they will look for sources of information and they will go on Twitter and use hashtag journal request. They also use platforms like Trav Media, um, response source but they, they all cost money whereas twitter is a free resource um so you can keep on top of what they're looking for and if you can just reply to them or ping an answer back to them um a lot, a lot, a lot of the time they will put their email addresses in as well and send them some information that's relevant to that request that you can jump on top of and you can use jack um then that's a great way of sort of a building relationships because if you start reacting to them they might not use you straight away but three or four 
occasions down the line they'll get to know you they'll get to you know recognize your face or your twitter handle or whatever and they'll know to look out for you or if they're writing an article and they know that you've responded to them before they might just come straight to you which has happened to a lot of our clients a lot of the time and um, sometimes journalists just pass us by completely as an agency and go straight to the client now because they know they can give that information that's that's interesting so uh, apart from twitter is mm-hmm. there any other ways that they could help build these relationships? Because obviously we're not talking about national a lot of the times. A lot of the times it mm-hmm. could be in the local or the county level. So mm-hmm. would you recommend even maybe doing a bit of research and just finding out who the local journalists are in their area um, through like LinkedIn and thing, things like this? Or is it literally the best way without being super stocky is just Twitter? No. Um- I mean, research is is the base of any PR campaign. So researching A, who your audience is and B, you know, what magazines or newspapers or media that they are using is really vital. So the best thing you can do is pick up a copy of that magazine or that newspaper. And as you say, research who who the journalists are, Um, ping them an email, just introduce yourselves. Um, I think journalists actually quite like just hi kind of emails they're so used to people just wanting stuff from them all the time that sometimes it's nice to just build up relationships that way um normally i'd say you know you could always pick up the phone but at the moment you can't because everyone's working remotely so knowing who to call and where is impossible Um, or sending them uh something that's like snail mail is so underrated um so you know sending something in the post but um yeah doing your research is really really vital for that so making sure you're building those relationships that way um and just reacting to things as well reacting to them on twitter or facebook or just again getting your name out there having a blast gonna get it on the boostly podcast boostly like bruce lee because it's so hard and the tea is loose leaf making up those rhymes don't write it just do it loosely